Hello and welcome back to Inside Unreal, where you can see how to make content for Unreal Engine 4. Today, we're going to be continuing with part two of our special feature on the visual effects that were created for the Infiltrator tech demo. Once again, I'm joined by Tim Ellick, senior visual effects artist for Epic Games. Hi, Tim. Hey, Zach. Now tell me, what are we going to be talking about today? We're going to talk a little bit more about the depth collision module. We're also going to get into some water effects, and then we're going to look at some atmosphere effects for the underground section of Infiltrator. Sounds awesome. Let's get started. So to help illustrate this, I set up a custom scene here with the two particle effects that are exactly the same. And you can see the particles are both using the depth buffer collision to collide with these meshes. And the depth buffer collision, you can preview the actual depth buffer here in the buffer visualization. And if I open that up, you can see this is the information that the particle collision module uses to determine uh, where the particles need to collide with the surface. The lighter areas are further back and the darker areas are further up front. And if I just switch back to lip mode, you can see that even though these are both the same mesh... Oh, they are? They're the exact same mesh. The only thing that's different about them is the material. This is using an opaque material, while this is using a mask material. And as you saw in the depth buffer, the mask material writes to the buffer, so all these particles can collide and fall through the holes in the actual mask surface. So you're actually kind of poking holes in this mesh by way of the material and the particles can fall through that? Yes. So if I take my effect and pull it, pull the emitter tab and the properties tab over here. Now these are two panels from the Cascade Particle Editor, correct? Yes. In Unreal Engine 4 you can tear the panels off and move them anywhere on the screen that you want them. And I'm just going to solo this emitter here so we can really get a good look at this. And I'm just going to increase my spawn rate to something a little crazy. <laughs> so you can really see the particles falling through there. I'm going to nice. reduce it just a little bit. So when we get into the actual collision module, there are several different options. And you can mouse over any of these to get a quick description of what it does. And so as you can see, the resilience controls how bouncy the sprite is. So if I set this to 1, the particles are just going to go crazy, bouncing all over the place. And if I set it back to 0.125, it's a little bit more reasonable. Um, and then friction is just how sticky the surface may be. So if I set it to 1, the particles are just going to really adhere to the surface. And if I set it back to 0.25, they'll slide around a little more. If I set it to 0, they'll just slide all over the place. And we can also use these radius controls to offset the sprites from the surface so that they don't they don't just clip right into the ground so can get them to show up just a little bit more. So it's kind of like offsetting the collision surface? Yes. And then we have the response method which is determines how the particles are going to behave once they collide. You can set them to stop and they'll they'll just stick right to the surface or you can set them to kill and they'll they won't go through the surface anymore. You can see that most evidently over here. That is just too cool. Typically, water is one of the more challenging effects to create. And what I try to do when I first get started is break the water down into what I consider to be the ideal forms. And in order to do that, I take a look at a lot of different reference. Sometimes I look at photography, but I also like to look at 2D animation, like old Disney films, as well as the book Elemental Magic by Joseph Gillen, which I recommend to any effects artist. And you can see here that I've broken all of this down into like the six parts that I felt like I needed to achieve this particular effect. Um, it's just sort of like a larger splash, and then another bit of water that just sort of lifts off the surface, then the radiating ripples, as well as some different droplet shapes, which I can use on sprites, and then this drop, which I can use with a mesh emitter. And once I get all those things together, I pull all that into Cascade, and you can see here's the, the final effect. And I can use the dynamic parameter and different material controls within Cascade to manipulate the behavior of the material in time with the animation, which I control on the mesh level. Can we see that in wireframe? Sure. Oh yeah, that's really cool. You can see here each one of these is three-dimensional. So if I rotate it around from different angles, you can get a different view of it. And we can even use it in different uh, ways. Like this particular mesh, you can see, looks more like if someone was to step in a big deep puddle and it would lift yeah. up and splash out. But in order to reuse and save on memory, I actually just scale the mesh a little bit different and animate it differently here so that I can 
save on asset space. Now, where do you see this effect in Infiltrator? It's in the hallway as the soldier's making a turn and walking down towards the infiltrator. And you can see it on the right-hand side there. And it's one of those effects that we use just more for ambience to add some secondary animation to the world and just help bring the world to life. You can see in the background here, there's a lot of mist and haze. And this is achieved with a mixture of particle systems as well as meshes. And there's some more haze down in here, just kind of drifting up through the grates. And that helps define the mid-ground, the background, and then in the foreground we have this kind of lit smoke or fog, and then some god rays coming through the grates, as well as all these little tiny dust motes floating around in the air, and you can see they just sort of parallax and as you move through the space. Yeah, they add a really nice depth. And these dust motes are kind of interesting because I'm actually using a vector field to control their behavior. And this vector field is just a, it's like basically if you think about it as a grid of velocities as I move around within this space, each one of these little lines denotes a direction that the particle is going to move in. The lit translucency also is fantastic because I can just grab this effect here and as I drag it around the world it updates in real time with the lighting information so I no longer have to tweak a material parameter or an instance parameter. Oh yeah, that's really awesome. Now, let me ask you this. As an effects artist, how has Unreal Engine 4 enabled you to create scenes like this? With the new GPU particles, I really don't have to worry about my emission rates and simulation time as much. So I can emit hundreds and hundreds of these little dust motes in the air, and I don't have to worry that every single one of them is ticking and updating every frame and chewing up game thread time. And I feel like these kind of details are what really helps define the space and create a relationship between the player and the world. And best of all, we do everything in Cascade, so the tool is very familiar, and for anyone who's used to doing effects in Unreal Engine 3, making the move to Unreal Engine 4 with Cascade is gonna be pretty straightforward. Very cool. Well, that's about all the time we have for today, so thank you very much for your time, Tim, and we will see you on the next Inside Unreal.